This is Twit. An interesting and, and obscure and yet important little evidentiary tidbit is um, in general, getting evidence in at trial is is a pretty onerous thing. You have to be able to demonstrate that the evidence is um, trustworthy and uh, uh, credible. And uh, listener James Russo uh, pointed out to me that there have been a couple of federal court decisions now, circuit court decisions, uh, where documents uh, archived in the Internet Archive in the Wayback Machine uh, have been admissible in court, that they've met all of the qualifications to be admissible evidence in a trial, which uh, I think is really important as we move forward as a society. Uh, so much of what counts as something evidentiary probably appeared on the web in one form or another. And the Internet Archive does its level best to keep track of that, even though things get pulled down. So um, it's uh, probably a good development to know that if you need to look to the Wayback Machine for evidence, there's a there is at least a bit of federal precedent that you should be able to use it. Stefan, any thoughts? So I, I've used the Wayback Machine in litigation before. I've never tried to get anything admitted at trial from from that archive, but you know it's a it's a great tool. If, for example, you're litigating against a consumer electronics company and you want to see what they had, you know, what they were offering for sale at a specific point in in time, and uh, it can be useful in, just for investigation purposes. I remember the interface being a little unwieldy at the time that I was using it. I um, frankly maybe I haven't used it in a while. Maybe it's improved. Uh, so, you know, maybe you can get that reliability now that was lacking at the time. But uh, the the Wayback Machine is certainly a great tool. It um, it um, remains to be seen, I think, whether whether it, it's broadly adopted as an ev evidentiary uh, database. But it, um, it's encouraging to me, again, that, that courts are uh, accepting... Uh, new technologies and thinking about th thinking substantively about whether or not they're reliable rather than just dismissing them. So it's great. Yeah. Do you agree, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I don't know anything about evidence, um, nor, nor had I heard of the Wayback Machine. I, I do love the name and it seems like a very, you know, it seems like otherwise you'd have to rely on, you know, some picture that you'd taken or, um, you know, on, a, on opposing counsel to generate um, their old, um, you know, consumer product web page from previously. So it seems like a great neutral um, setting to to get information about what was being said at at a certain time in in, in history. What I, if I could just add one more thing that I just to kind of be a little dweeby about it for a second. You know, the internet is always speaking in the present tense. It seems because every time you load a website, you're loading it, and there it is. It's kind of like that journalistic present tense, and the Wayback Machine allows you to kind of like insert this alternate reality where now you're speaking in the past tense and there's something just slightly weird about like using the tool because you go onto it and it's like you're traveling through time and it um it you i don't know it just try it out sometime it's very odd to go to a, a website that you recognize in its current manifestation and look at it in its old uh, manifestation because you, you start to notice all the different ui elements and how they've gradually sort of transformed over time and you've just kind of gone along with it at every stage uh, it's it's almost like hearing a song you haven't heard for a while and, and, and kind of being transported to a moment in time. So it is a fun little exercise for, for those of us who spend way too much time on the Internet to kind of jog our memories and see what it used to be like.